Your Happy Wives Club is almost to one million yes, it um, is. members. Yeah. So let's talk about how that journey started and how you grew such a large community. Sure. Well, the Happy Wives Club grew mainly because I was a happy wife and I didn't see myself represented in media. Even, even now, you very rarely see it. At the time, this was about five years ago, the number one show was Desperate Housewives. The Real Housewives of everywhere were popping up. I said, you know what? I'm going to start a club. I'm going to start a club for women like me who have awesome husbands, who love being married, who do not see themselves portrayed in anything that we mm -hmm. see on media. And so that's what I did. And I invited my five closest girlfriends that I knew adore their hubbies that all live within a 20 mile radius of here. And within four weeks, we were in 22 countries. You also just spoke at TED, yes. which is like, oh, like it's like <laughs> Mecca for speakers and yeah. for ideas. Yeah. So how did that come about? It's, you know, it's funny. I, my little sister, she calls it curated happenstance because she watched the way things in my mm -hmm. life would unfold. And, and people would always go, oh my gosh, the best things in happen in your sister's life. And then she moved in with us and she watched us and she watched how we work. And she said, this stuff isn't just happening to you. Yeah. You guys are creating it. So this is the story of TED. Okay. I set a goal for 2015 to give a TED talk. TED is now in Canada. Most people don't know. Big TED isn't here anymore. Oh. Yeah, they, they moved to Canada a couple years ago. And so there are a handful of TEDx's that are here that are basically the biggest ones that are here and there that have production value that's similar. Oh, okay. So I did my research to figure out which ones they were. And then after I did my research and narrowed it down to the one that was the top one, it was in Portland. Okay. So then I went to LinkedIn and looked <laughs> up the person who owns that TEDx. And then I sent an email to someone who was connected to them. <laughs> and, wow. and said, I love it. Do you know this person? And she replied almost immediately. And she says, not only do I know him, he just asked me if I have a suggestion for a TED speaker. Awesome. So yeah, curated happenstance. What's your number one piece of advice for someone who wants to become a New York Times bestseller? Do your homework. Again, curated happenstance. My publisher, I told them, I want to debut at number one on the New York Times. This is my goal. So when they were getting ready to start their marketing plan, putting it together, I said, hold tight. You're going to get something in the mail. They got in the mail, I think it was maybe a 22-page marketing plan. Yeah. What about the writing ethic and, and the work that goes into writing? What's your yeah. advice about that? Everyone is different. So there's a lot of people that say, just show up every day to write. I can't show up every day to write. And for me, what works is, is blocking off a week at a hotel and sitting every morning and just writing. And you have to figure out what works for you. Here are my key takeaways on achieving success from my interview with Fawn Weaver. Number one, look for a hole. Fawn became the New York Times bestseller we know her as today because she saw a hole in the marketplace and in the media where she was not represented. So if you find a hole in the marketplace where you feel like something is not being represented or a story is not being told, that's your opportunity to tell that story. Number two, do your research. How did she become a New York Times bestseller? How did she land her TED Talk? How did she land press for her books when they came out? She did the research and figured things out herself. I love that she sent a report to her own publishing house on what it took to become a New York Times bestseller because there is a lot that goes into hitting that list. And so she did the research herself and she wrote up a report and sent it to her own publisher. Number three, work hard for what you want. This woman writes New York Times bestsellers. She manages multiple businesses within her portfolio and she leads a community within her Happy Wives Club that is almost one million members. If you find Fawn Weaver, you will find her working. When her sister moved in with her and saw the way that she worked, she realized that things didn't just happen, Fawn made things happen, which I find encouraging because anyone can apply hard work towards their goals. So do the work towards what you want to achieve and do that work your way, which leads to number four. Because even though many say write every day, Fawn Weaver doesn't. Instead, she holds up in a hotel room and writes her book in one week. And finally, be ready to serve. This was her number one advice for new entrepreneurs or those trying to achieve success. If your goal is to serve your audience, you will find success.
I hope this encouraged and inspired and motivated you today. You can find more articles and videos like this at success.com and you can see my full interview with Fawn Weaver at thepursuit.tv.